Good evening and welcome to the Extended Drive S5 on intellectualradio.com slash iHeartRadio Station. I'm your host, Roman. We have a great show for you today and we are in an extended drive, part of the Monday Night Moguls with one sister to another with Angela, Straight No Chasers with Rhea Ray, setting it off with John Stennis and finally Monday Night Mingle with Gina. This is, again, this extended five at drive. And today on the extended drive, substituting for setting it off, host John Stennis. I am Roman Morrow. And we have a special exclusive edition of intellectualradio.com. We're going to go down a timeline according to ABC7news.com timeline. Eight years ago, after her death, ex Bolingbroke police sergeant Drew Peterson was on trial for the murder of his third wife, Kathleen Savio. Peterson is also a suspect in the disappearing disappearance of his fourth wife, Stacy Peterson, who has been missing since 2007. Stacy disappearance led police to reopen the Savio case. Here is the timeline. March 2004, Kathleen Savio was found dead in a dry bathtub Her hair was soaked in blood. Death ruled accidental. October 2007, Stacy Peterson, age 23, goes missing. Search focuses on Illinois Michigan Canal near Lockport Lock. Believing foul play is a factor, Stacy's family wants her husband, Drew Peterson, to take a lie detector test. Drew Peterson denies any wrongdoing, says Stacy ran off with another man. In November 2007, Drew Peterson named suspects in Stacy's disappearance. Peterson resigns from Bolingbrook Police Department. November 2007, Savio's body exhumed from grave. Case reopens. December 2007, search for Stacy focuses on blue container. February tw- um, 2008, Savio case investigated. Pathologist rules the death of Peterson's third wife was a homicide. Peterson denies involvement in Savio's death, Stacy's disappearance. March 2008, Savio's divorce attorney says he was con- contacted by Stacy before she disappeared. April 2008, Peterson offers $25,000 reward for information on Stacy appears on Larry King. May 2008, Peterson arrested on weapons charge. Felony gun charges are dropped in November 2008. December 2008, Drew Peterson announces his engaged. He's engaged. In January 2009, Peterson fiance calls it off and in a 24-year-old woman's father rejoices. In April 2009, Savio family sues Drew Peterson. May 2009, Peterson arrested, indicted in Savio's death. June 2009, judge wants to lure Peterson's media profile. February 2010, hearing into use of hearsay in Savio's trial held. Peterson's second wife testifies she was threatened by Peterson. In August 2010, Peter um, sent a letter not easing being national pastime, printed in the Chicago Sun-Times. June 2011, Peterson offers woman Stacy's clothes in let- love letter. 2000, January 2012, Rob Lowe portrays Drew Peterson in TV movie, Drew Peterson Untouchable. April 2012, court allows hearsay evidence in Peterson trial. July 2012, January selected in, jury selected in Peterson murder trial. In September 2012, Drew Peterson found guilty in Savio's murder. Again, the timeline was offered of events were provided by abcnews.com. In an exclusive interview in intellectualradio.com slash iHeartRadio interview with no editing and limited commercial breaks to tell their side of the story. And special thanks to John Stennis, Gina from Monday Might Mingle, and executive producer um, Earl Winfrey. We want to um, give our guests what that is here today, Robert Lawson and Cassandra Callis. Thank you for joining us today. 
in an exclusive interview. Thank you. Thank you. Now, please explain to intellectualradio.com slash iHeartRadio station, Stacy as a child growing up. Uh, Stacy was a wonderful person. She loved everything, loved life, and when she was going through high school, she started, you know, or going through school, she studied hard to, you know, be what she wanted to be, and then, you know, she always wanted to be a mother and have a family, and that's when, you know, she was going to school, and she just graduated high school. She was staying with my sister, Tina, and she was just working a part-time job at a hotel, and she met... Drew, actually Drew started basically stalking her there, but, you know, with his kindness and, you know, um, he basically won her over, you know, and, you know, she fell in love with him and, you know, they had a thing going on for a while there and then, you know, um, she got pregnant and, you know, got a house and had kids and she was happy and that's when the real Drew came out and she seen all of his controllingness and, you know, she wasn't allowed to have friends, and she basically couldn't have a life. You know, she couldn't even go to the grocery store by herself. You know, she'd have to give him a receipt. You know, what time did you check out? You know, he would look at the time of the receipt as she checked out, and if it took her more than 10 minutes to get home. You know, oh, you're cheating on me, or, you know, you where did you go? Who are you talking to? And, you know, she would always call and ask me, you know, what do I do? And I was like, try counseling, you know, marriage counseling, because she really did love them, you know. And, you know, she wanted to be there for the kids, because we had, you know, we had a separated family where, you know, the family divorced and stuff. So she, you know, did everything she could to work it out. And um, it was probably like a month before she went missing. Uh, she called me up, and she's like, I was just going into his briefcase to uh, find something i don't remember what it was uh, a pen or a paper clip i don't even remember and she ran across her phone bill and it was all highlighted numbers and you know people that you know obviously he didn't recognize and he had an itemized phone bill of hers and she she said that was the last straw that you know she was he was still like obsessed over wondering where she was and he had he had her, her phone gps like if she was at my house with the kids, he would GPS her, you know, and make sure she was there. And it was just, it was crazy for her, and she just didn't want that anymore. You mentioned that she was normal, as normal could be, and transitioned into Drew Peterson. Have you noticed any warning signs? Early on, before you said the real Drew came out at a certain point, did you notice before that real Drew came out those warning signs? Uh, I did, yeah. I, I just didn't like him from the get-go. I just knew there was something eerie about him, and it was just it was all, everything was all hunky-dory, and then it, everything just kind of slowly started coming out, and you know they'd have their little fights and stuff like that, but. Um, like when he would control her like that, I, I would just tell him flat out, you know, I didn't like you, and you know, you, you know, she needs her friends, and you know, you can't just keep her locked in the house, you know. Was there you're mentioning without mentioning, not putting words in your mouth, control? Do you think he was very controlling? No, well, he was very controlling. Yes. So. What if you look at it, at one of the interviews that I just saw earlier today, he admits that he wanted to control his family. He, he states it very clear in that interview. He likes to have control over his family. So did you guys notice that? I, I, I yeah, I noticed it. Uh, it was it was Drew grew up in like a military style family, and it was you know very strict. And, you know, and that's that's basically the way it was, you know, like at Stacy's, like if, if I was over there for dinner, Drew would be home at after roll call because he was the sergeant. After roll call, he'd get home about six, six ish, six thirty and dinner was on the table ready for him and everybody would be there to eat. And then like if one of the little ones didn't want to eat, you know, Stacy happy go lucky. Oh, you got to eat, you know, and then Drew would just lay down the law and, you know, eat that. You know, he was the, the strict one. 
Do you think that she was too trustworthy? You mentioned in previous interviews that she was loving, peaceful, and trustworthy. In your opinion, do you think that in this type of realm with Drew that she was too trusting, too loyal? I, I guess you can say that, yeah. She was too easygoing, more like, you know, I guess you can say. Well, obviously, I mean, she was, she was too trusting. I mean, where is she now? I mean, let's look at it realistically. She was trusting in, in, ha she was trusting in having uh, that relationship with Drew, and where is she now? So she obviously trusted him too much. You mentioned when she met Drew Peterson your opinion of him. And you said from the beginning, you just didn't like him from the beginning. What were those signs that's, that said, I don't like him, I don't care, I don't care for him, for him, I just, that's it? Well, it was even before I met him. He, uh, me and Stacy were young, you know, she was 16. And I was 15, and, you know, she had a car, so she'd come pick me up, and we'd go to, like, Navy Pier and stuff like that. And when, whenever we'd hang out, we'd hang out all the time with her and her friends, and we'd all just be happy-go-lucky, go see the latest movie or go get the new food or, you know, go to a fancy restaurant. And um, it happened, like, a couple times I was with her, and she's like, oh, I got to go, you know. And I'm like, why? What's going on? Oh, I got to go meet my friend Drew. I'm like, who's Drew? Oh, just a friend. And I was like, oh. And, you know, I never met Drew, never seen him. And then when she turned 17, it was like that weekend she had an apartment fully leathered, fully furnished with leather, tables, everything. You know, hey, look what I got. And I'm like, where would all this come from? Oh, Drew, he's my boyfriend. And I met him. And I was just like, wow, you know, so... Did you notice the age factor? Yeah. And that resulted to your decision? No, not the really. It was just more him trying to buy her love or, you know. But she was young and gullible, you know. Just him being a cop, it was just more, you know. Like, we'd, we'd go through Bolingbrook and she'd be speeding, being like a little, you know, goofy and stuff. Oh, I can blow this red light or blow this stop sign and, you know, because Drew's the cop and he's the sergeant, you know. But she grew out of that, you know, and she did love him because of the kids and everything. But then once that ring was on the finger, it was done with. She was in that control. You mentioned receipts and the timeline of those receipts. Where are you? Where have you been? And that type of control was like, wow, that was a little bit excessive. In your opinion... Why it was that type of excessive that got out of hand, in your opinion? When was that moment when you said, whoa, we have a serious problem here? I, re I really didn't know about it too much. I mean, it all kind of started coming out because she really didn't, you know, confide in me too much. Cause she knew I didn't like him and, you know, we'd get into spats all the time. And, like, I would call the house and Drew would answer the phone and I would purposely say, Hey, you wrinkly bald bastard, or whatever, you know, give me my sister, you know, and then he'd be like, get all mad and say that I wasn't allowed there, or, you know, he, she couldn't talk to me, and she's like, yeah, right, that's my sister. So I wasn't allowed around there for a while, and ever since then, we just didn't get along, and that wasn't too far after, you know, that was pretty much after Savio had died that I basically said that he had something to do with that, because somebody just doesn't slip and fall and die in a bathtub. So I kind of stayed out of the picture for a little while. Now, from there, you started to connect the dots. What was the aha moment that you said, you know what, we got to do something now to get her out of this relationship? It was probably, let's see, it was the weekend before. Um, she, was, she came to my work that week before, and sh she told me, that she wanted to get a divorce, and I said, okay. And, uh, you know, a couple times she did it, said, said, you know, she, she wanted a divorce, and then Drew would run out and they bought, he bought her a Harley, you know, bought her a motorcycle or put a pool in the backyard or, you know, it was just like, 
whatever. And then one time we were at a um, family barbecue kind of thing, and everybody's there, and Drew was just being rude, and Stacy was just avoiding him, playing with the kids, and um, I just looked at Drew and I told him, you know, you're a piece of work, and I don't like you. And he's like, "What do you mean? Your sister's happy?" I said. He, and I go, how is she happy? And he goes, uh, she has everything she wants and anything she needs. And I said, money doesn't buy happiness. I said, you know, she needs her friends and she needs, you know, people to hang out with and get out, you know. And from then on, it was just, that was between me and Drew. And then it was like a little bit after that, he was trying to please her and buying her stuff. And she had came by my work and she goes, look at this ring. And then I said, oh. I said, what's this? And he goes, oh, Drew gave it to me. She goes, but I still want a divorce. And I said, okay, I'll come over later for dinner. You know, and I went over there for dinner. And that's when she said that, you know, she, she wanted to go through with the divorce. And I asked her how she felt about it. And and she said she was scared, you know, that, or no, she asked, she, she told me she was going to go through with her divorce. And I asked her how she felt, and she said, you know, she told me what she wanted to do. She wanted to continue her school, and you know, take so that way she could take care of the kids. And I said, and she asked how I felt, and I said I was scared because of what happened to Savio. And she just she didn't say anything, but she just looked up to me and said, you know, if anything happens to me, Drew did it. And then I, I just looked her in the eye right there, and I, because I could just see the fear in her eyes, that she knew something about Savio, that she didn't want to tell me. And I said, let's go, because he was at work. I said, let's pack the kids up, let's go. And she's like, no, I can't. He's the breadwinner. He can take them. You know, she goes, I want to do it the right way. I see a lawyer on Monday. And I said, okay, I'll be here for you. And I was. Every night, the first night I was there, we, you know, hung out, had dinner. We got the kids to bed, and I was going to spend the night, but it got late, and she wanted to go to bed. And I was like, okay, she had class in the morning, so she had class. And Saturday, I was. she called me after her class, and she's like, okay, dinner will be at this time. And I said, okay. So I went over there. Me and my friend went over there. We had dinner, and we went downstairs, and we actually watched a movie. And then it was getting kind of late and uh, she wanted to go to bed and I just I was like okay so we we left and that was the last time I saw her I think that was a Saturday night actually yeah that was the Saturday night that I was there knowing that you rewind going back not the faintest idea that that was your last time seeing your sister. Was there anything in your mind that should have, could have, would have, if I would have done this, could have done that? Did that ever enter? No, all the time. Like, should have, could have, would have, you know, like, I could have got her out of the house that night, you know, but that doesn't matter. Drew would have found her. You know, it, it would have happened sooner or later. So I just, I don't blame myself. It's not my fault. Robert, we're going to bring you into the conversation. What is your assessment on the Drew Peterson case? How do you feel about it? There's no, not a doubt in my mind that Drew did this. I mean, if, if that's what you're asking me. Uh, I've looked at, at so many hours of this, I couldn't begin to tell you now. And what, I've, what I see is Drew did this. I mean, there's, there's, like I said, there's not a doubt about it. Um, I'm here to help this family bring her home. Uh, I do what I do, and I, I do a good job at it. I don't stop. I don't give up. Once I start on this, I'm going to be out there every day until I, until I find her. So I can bring her home. I mean, it just it needs to be brought to an end here. This has gone on way too long for this family. Um, I've had success in the past, and I hope to have some success with this. In your, there's hope. Oh, there's always hope here, yeah. I mean, 
We're never going to give up hope. If you don't have hope, I mean, where are we then? In your analysis of this case, when Drew Peterson appeared on the Larry King television show, when earlier in the show we announced the timeline and he offered a $25,000 reward, quote, $25,000 reward for information on Stacy. Leading to her safe return. Yeah, exactly. leading to her safe. What was your feeling on that moment? And then he went on another media tour on the David Letterman show. And the list goes on and on and made it a little bit, not putting words, but some news publication said a mockery out of this situation. What is your feelings towards that? Well, the part where he offered the reward for her safe return obviously just shows that he killed her because he wouldn't. She wanted to leave. She wanted a divorce, and he's a greedy old man, and you know he thought she was going to take all of his money. She didn't want his money. She just you know wanted her family, her kids, and for him to offer a twenty-five thousand dollar reward for her safe return is just obvious that she wasn't coming home safe. You know that he killed her, and then but for him to be out there in the media, that was a good thing because he implemented implemented himself on a lot of things in a lot of those interviews. He gave away like good stuff. I can't really say what, but it's helped with proof of him killing my sister. When you saw him on talk shows such as David Letterman, such as Larry King, and other lighthearted shows. In your mind, it's kind of like, how dare he? Not really. I mean, it was, it was just getting old, you know, like him in the media. He thought he was some kind of star. So, but I knew that he was going to be arrested for Savio long before he was arrested because I was having uh, meetings with the state police frequently and they would tell me what was going on and what was going to happen and I knew a few months ahead of time on the day that he was going to get arrested. Your assessment on Drew Peterson's media, so-called media tour, what was your feelings towards that? I think it's ridiculous. I mean, to put this family through all his little circus acts and shows, it's it's unnecessary. Um, if you watch him, he's all about being up in the media. And, you know, I'm going to get out there and do what I can do and really put him up there now. But he's going to be in a place where he don't want to be. I'm going to put him in the, in the media to where he's he's not going to want to be in that position. So let him do his little his little shows and antics. There's nothing we can do about that. I'm just here to, to do what I do. And if it puts him in the media then, that's the media I want to see him in. Back in 2009, Drew Peterson, with a radio station promotion, had this dating thing, like a date with Drew Peterson. The radio station, which we're not going to mention, have called it off because it was a backlash. How do you feel about that? When was it? It was around... 2009. Yeah, 2009. Wasn't it like win a date with Drew or something yes. like that? Was it on a website? It was on a website, but it was also promoted on a particular radio station. But it was Drew's website? Um, I I'm, not, I'm not 100% sure if it was or, or not, but it was a radio station that was behind it. I, I just, you know, I just thought it was, he was just trying to get media attention. And it was just, I mean, by that point, I didn't care. I mean, I, my focus is, all, and it always has been, is to search and find Stacy. Yeah, that radio station nonchalantly mentioned to him 
about doing a uh, a stunt like that, a, a date with Drew. And he said, yeah, talk to the lawyer, see if we can do that. It was a very casual conversation that that radio station had as he was walking away. Um, who in their right mind would even think about entering any contest at that point to get a date with Drew Peterson? I mean, you have to be out of your mind to enter that contest. What interest could any woman have out there to, to be interested enough to go on a date with him after all of that?